The U.S. Air Force revealed concept art and designation for its Shadow Northrop Grumman B-21 Long Range Strike Bomber (LRSB) last week. There are plenty of details we can now get about the new warplane. First and foremost, the new B-21 looks a lot like its predecessor, the B-2 Spirit. In fact, the new aircraft looks remarkably similar to the original Advanced Strategic Penetration Aircraft ASPA, and Advanced Technology Bomber concepts from the 1980s that eventually produced the B-2. But Spirit was redesigned late in the game to operate at low altitude after Dr. Paul Kaminsky, current chairman of the Defense Science Council, Red Team warned that the B-2 might have to use low-level penetration as the Soviets build new ones, a more capable radar, as legendary Aviation Week journalist Bill Sweetman points out in his book Inside the Stealth Bomber. The redesign led to decreased range and payload, as well as a larger radar cross-section. If the current B-21 design truly represents the direction the Air Force is taking, the new aircraft will take the all-aspect stealth design of the B-2 to the next level. In particular, the B-21's low observable design will be more effective against low-frequency radars operating in the UHF and VHF bands, which are increasingly popular as a means of countering stealth aircraft. Indeed, as Air Force Chief of Staff General. Norton Schwartz told the Armed Services Committee in 2012, even the B-2 is starting to lose its ability to penetrate hostile airspace. The technology they are designed on with respect to signature management dot was the 80s, Schwartz told the committee, adding, the reality is that over time the B-2 will become less viable in contested airspace. The B-21 design, which is similar to the original high-altitude optimized B-2 design, was built to counter low-frequency radars that can detect and track tactical fighter-sized stealth aircraft. Unlike the F-22 or F-35, which are designed to operate in environments where adversaries might be aware of their presence, the B-2 and B-21 are designed to avoid detection altogether. Essentially, the B-21, and the B-2 to some extent, with its large flying wing design, reduces its low-frequency radar cross-section to the point where it blends in with the inherent background noise of the UHF-VHF band system. It was similar to the concept of how submarines hide in the background noise of the ocean. But, like all stealth aircraft, it will be invisible. Stealth is not an invisibility cloak. Stealth technology only delays detection and tracking. While the Air Force's rendering of the B-21 gives us some clues as to the configuration of the new aircraft, most of its other parameters remain unknown. The B-21's size and payload will largely be determined by whatever propulsion system is available to run it. Given that the LRSB is slated to enter service in the mid-2020s, the aircraft will have to use existing engine designs. Moreover, the engine must have a profile conducive to stealth aircraft dot that almost certainly ruled out derivatives of large bypass commercial aircraft engines, such an engine would have an enormous diameter even if it was highly efficient. Dot a more likely option is a derivative of an already produced military machine. Possible options could include non-enlarged derivatives of the F-15 and F-16's Pratt and Whitney F-100 or General Electric's F-110. The F-110, despite its aging design, would share the LRSB with the Rockwell International B-1 Lancer and Northrop B-2 Spirit, both of which used engines from the same lineage. The F-101B-1 was demoted to the F-110, which in turn was demoted to the F-118B-2 motor. The F-110 derivative does have its merits. But the most likely candidate to power the LRSB is an unaugmented version of the Pratt & Whitney F-135, which in its current state offers around 28,000 pounds of thrust. With a few adjustments, such as an increase in bypass ratio, the F-135 version could probably produce more than 30,000 pounds of thrust while potentially increasing fuel efficiency. With two such engines the LRSB would have less than the 70,000 pounds of thrust available to the B-2, 
but there are indications that the B-21 was smaller than the Spirit. While the LRSB may be provided to accommodate any engines that will eventually result from the Air Force's adaptive cycle engine program, termed ADVENT, EAT, and EAT, if the service is serious about an initial operational capability date sometime in 2025, the new bomber will certainly using existing propulsion plants. It took a long time and a lot of money to develop a new turbine engine. It's also not an endeavor without risks, look no further than China's failed attempt to develop a domestic jet engine. If one accepts the premise that the B-21 will be powered by twin F-135 engines without auxiliaries, then one can assume that the new bomber will be larger than the Boeing F-15 E-Strike Eagle or General Dynamics F-111 but smaller than the B-1 or B-2. Given the type of threat from low-frequency radars projected to exist in the future and current observable material limitations, the B-21's subsonic flying wing design will be large enough to counter low-frequency radars. A stealth aircraft the size of a tactical fighter should be optimized to defeat higher frequency bands such as the C, X and Q bands as a matter of simple physics, but a strategic bomber such as the B-2 or LRSB could be larger to counter lower frequencies. Frequency Radar There is a step change in the signature of a stealth aircraft once the frequency wavelength exceeds a certain threshold and causes a resonance effect. Typically, the resonance occurs when a feature on an airplane, such as the tail fin, is less than eight times the size of a given frequency's wavelength. That means a bomber like the B-21 has to have allowances for layers of two feet or more of radar absorbing material on every surface or designers are forced to trade for which frequency bands they optimize for operation. As such, to defeat the low-frequency radars operating on the L, there are also indications that the Air Force plans to build a significant electronic attack capability to the B-21, and the LRS, airframe. Electronic attack capability is necessary to counter low-frequency radars operating in the VHF band, which are nearly impossible to defeat with just the shape of the airframe and low observable materials. The fact is that despite the Air Force's public narrative that an aircraft like the F-35 can enter a high threat zone alone and not be afraid, the service's own experts at the Air Force Warfare Center recognize the value of jamming. Stealth and electronic attacks always have a synergistic relationship because detection is all about signal-to-noise ratio. Low observability reduces signal, while electronic attack increases noise.